Joining us now with more is Rabbi Adam Shalom with the Kol Hadash Humanistic Congregation in Deerfield. And he was stepping off in the parade right as the shooting happened just a few blocks away. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here, Rabbi. Go ahead and describe your experience yesterday. What did you see? We were lining up. I was actually with uh, my wife's job with the Community Foundation in Highland Park. Uh, we were behind a klezmer band and a day camp with lots of kids when all of a sudden we heard a few pops over the music and people started streaming away from where the event had happened. Uh, first dozens and then hundreds, and it was just a horde of people moving to the east and the south trying to get away from what had happened. At first, we were in denial and thought maybe they're overreacting to firecrackers, but it became very clear that it was something much, much worse. Uh, we were able to reunite with our son, who was with a different group. He was walking with his swim club, and we managed to walk home, and then we stayed in our house for the next several hours, actually watching WGN to find out what was happening and if and when we'd be able to leave our homes. And correct me if I'm wrong, Rabbi, but I don't believe anyone from your congregation in Deerfield was injured in this incident, but nearby in Glencoe at their congregation, somebody was killed. They've reported Jackie Sunheim. Curious if you've spoken to anyone at that congregation. I haven't, but the lines between towns and congregations are not very strict. We have members in Highland Park and Deerfield and Northbrook and North Shore Congregation Israel, where this woman was a member for many years, has members in Highland Park and many other areas. Um, it really does feel often like one North Shore Jewish community, and that was one of the fears when this event took place. Highland Park is known for having a substantial Jewish population, around 30 percent, I believe. And that was one of the fears that this had been an anti-Semitic motivated attack. We don't know what the motivation was yet. Um, but we know that it's impacted us, and we know that uh, there have been casualties in our broader Highland Park North Shore community. Right. It's, uh, it's obviously too soon to determine the, the motive of the shooter. We just don't know that yet. Uh, tell us again, uh, back to yesterday, uh, did you see any of the victims? I did not. I was two blocks east and two blocks south, just about to start the parade. Um, so I did not see any of the victims or the uh, carnage on that main block other than on the news. Um, and we didn't see the aftermath either until we were home. Uh, what we saw was a lot of scared people and a lot of traumatized people who had fled from that place uh, and didn't know what was happening, were trying to find their children or their grandchildren. And I think that kind of trauma will also last for a long time. Obviously, our thoughts go out to the physical sufferers from uh, injuries or even death. But we also know that this has an impact psychologically, emotionally on people to have been through this kind of an event, and that will last for a long time. And you talk about going back out to restaurants, to stores, because this is your home. I saw that you said that in a post. Um, can you talk about that a little bit, how hard it is to kind of pick up your feet and continue on after knowing that this happened when you were right there? It will be very odd. Uh, currently, the downtown Highland Park Business District is closed because the FBI continues to investigate. But I know it will be challenging the first time back on that corner, uh, the first time seeing those spaces again or being with large groups of people. Uh, we're having an online gathering for my community because I don't know that people are ready to be together in a group again so shortly after this disaster. Um, it will be a challenge. But this is what people do. You know, in other parts of the country, this has happened. Um, as Jewish people, we're often connected to our brethren in Israel, and they've had incidents at a Sbarro pizzeria, at an Aroma cafe in Jerusalem. And life must go on. You don't let them win. And so we will go back. We will have events together. We will be back in those spaces in Highland Park. It will take time, and it will be difficult. But we know that life must continue. I concluded the message to my congregation I sent yesterday with the old Jewish saying, L'chaim to life. It's even more needed now than before. Rabbi Adam Shalom, thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you very much.